higher. And the way that happened is in the last chapter where we left off in Jeremiah, we, uh, God had told Jeremiah not to marry any of the individuals um, from this land because these individuals were under judgment. So as we discussed that, that led into other questions about marriage and divorce. And it was a very rich conversation. And just before we ended, Sister Akila and others had asked some very specific questions related to marriage, but we didn't have enough time to address it. So I said, everybody take these next seven days, do all the research, related to the topic of marriage and then come back and we will do a lesson and have a nice discussion. Now, prayerfully, the lesson that we do today, uh, you will find information and principles that you would be able to use in your own life as well as if you know somebody who's going through a similar situation related to this, you would have information to give them now. Or when you want to pass it down to your children or even to your uh, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, et cetera. Having said that, we will prepare to start our lesson. I'm gonna pull it up. All right. And again, if you have any questions at any time, just uh, raise your hand or take yourself off mute, ask the question. If there's something that you don't understand, um, please feel free to ask the question and we'll do our best to clarify. All right. And I had asked uh, everyone to come on and to invite someone for two reasons. One, uh, because this is a very controversial topic, marriage to, a, to the believers, very controversial. And uh, number two, I don't think that it's addressed holistically, right? I think it's just a question is asked. We isolate that question and try and come up with answers, but we're not given the big picture. So that's what I want to do today. Um, I want to present the big picture and see if some of these answers that we, some of these questions that we have about marriage, see if we can answer them ourselves. All right, so these are some of the common questions about marriage. They really come into three categories. How long is marriage for? Number two, should any party in the marriage divorce for any reason? And if so, what reason? Or what reason can't they divorce? And then third, if there is a divorce, should either party be able to remarry? So many of the questions that we ask are related to marriage itself. How long? Second is divorce should you know believers or people divorce for what reason and then three should they remarry if there's any other question that uh you might have that i didn't put in this list you can take yourself off mute and you can ask the question because i want to be able to as best as I can, address all the questions. I personally think they fall under these three. Is there any other 
a potential question related to marriage that someone has that not on this list? I'm going to assume uh, that's a no. Now, prayerfully, my kids are on, right? Because uh, one day they're going to want to get married. And um, even though I've discussed this with them, I would like them to be on so they have an understanding when they look to get married, they understand what it is marriage is all about. So again, what we're going to do today is we're going to, our aim is to understand what marriage is and then answer the questions above. Try and understand what marriage is and then answer the questions above, right? Okay. And then I see one question. Uh, okay. Oh, let me make uh, Brother Rock co-host, a little housekeeping. All right. And I see uh, either Chandler, Brother Chandler, or Sister Carlene put in uh, infidelity, right? So we're going to talk about that too, infidelity. Any other? Aunt, Brother Chandler, what about infidelity? We're going to talk about that too. Anyone else? Is there any other question that you might uh, would like to get addressed in this study or in a study about marriage? Any other question, you can just type it in the chat or you can um, take yourself off mute. And uh, Sister Jackie said, marriage should last until the wife or husband passes away. All right. We're going to discuss that as well. No problem. I see that, Sister Jackie. Anybody else? Okay. So let's jump into this. Now, again, like I said, um, we ask these questions in a vacuum. I want to go back and take an overview on marriage and then see if these questions, if we can address these uh, questions. Brother Jermaine, very good. Different beliefs. What if it's two people of different beliefs? Very good. We're going to address that as well. All right. So first, the natural definition, then the spiritual reality. So we're going to approach this overview of marriage, right? Till death do us part. We're going to talk about that too. So first, we're going to take a look at the natural definition of marriage, then the spiritual reality of marriage. Now, and again, I'm going to pose questions because I like the participation. And from the participation, um, we build because it's not just uh, my ideas or <laughs> my quote unquote wisdom. We get the spirit is on all of us, right? So we all may have something uh, to share. All right. Okay. So, first question. What is marriage? What is marriage? Anyone, anyone can answer. Take yourself off mute, right? Because I can't, see, or if someone, or if, if it's typed in the chat, I can't see the chat right now. If it's typed in the chat, then I need somebody just to, uh, Sister Sylvia, you can uh, read it to me if you see it in the chat. All right, uh, anyone? What is marriage? Pastor. Yes, yeah, Sister Monique, talk to me, sis. I would say that it is a covenant promise between uh, man and woman. All right. Okay. Very good. Anyone agree with Sister Monique or anyone have a uh, different or a distinct answer, meaning you want to add to Sister Monique's? Uh, that's a good answer that it is a covenant agreement yeah. between two people. Um, Sister Mel or Brother Rock? 
Yes, sir. I agree. The only thing I would add is that it's between two people and God. Okay. All right. Um, we, um, Sister Mel added the component of God in there, right? And I'm sure Monique um, also meant that, but it's good for the men to mention it to make this clear that there's this covenant agreement between God, uh, uh, man and man. No, man and woman. Man and woman. No, it's also for um, uh, procreation. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um, and Sister Barry said, and God bless Sister Barry. Hi, Sister Everybody Barry. Everybody remember to pray yes. for Sister Barry. Yes. Um, she came out to our women's workshop. It was powerful. Uh, that's when I met her. Um, she got a breakthrough and she helped others get a break, big breakthrough. And um, we've also uh, appointed her to design the church website. So please, everyone, pray for her. God Amen. bless you. Amen. 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 Um, again, Sister Barry said... Welcome, welcome. Sister Barry said, marriage is a covenant agreement between man and woman, and that unifies the two flesh as one. Okay, very good. And then um, iPhone said, spiritual union between a man and a woman. All right. Okay, very good. Very good. I now, for I oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Does someone have a something to say? All right. Um, now, before I put the answer on the board, um, I also put up their divorce, divorce, right? Because I'm going to put forth tonight that you cannot speak about marriage unless you also speak about divorce. You cannot speak about marriage unless you also speak about divorce. All right. So here for marriage, I put two or more united as one. That's what I put. Um, anyone disagree with that? Anyone agree? Anyone think uh, it's not enough? Or it's too much? Uh, Pastor, what do you mean by or more? Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because the reason I put two or more, I could erase it and just put two, is because the word marriage or really, really it's marriage. It's a it, it's really marry. The word is marry. I should change that from marriage to marry, right? Marriage is two. That's my fault. I should change it to marry. It's marry and divorce, marry and divorce. The word marry, if you look it up in a dictionary, the word marry literally means to join things, join things mm -hmm. together, yep. right? There's two or three or four things. You join things together. You can marry human beings. You can marry substances. You can marry. It's just a word that means to join, to unite, right? If you look it up in the dictionary, if you look it up in the dictionary, right? Yeah. Um, but when it comes to human beings, yes, it's two, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, in some cultures, it's not two. Um, so does anyone agree, disagree? I'm using the dictionary definition. You all used the used a. Where did you get your definition from? My head. This <laughs> is right. And I'm assuming right. That's the um. That's the spiritual definition, mm -hmm. right? Um. But the de definition I put on the board is um from the dictionary okay so what is divorce okay pastor Man, divorce is the legal separation of a marriage by court or other competent body 
It's a dissolution of a marriage by court or other competent body. Which one is that? That's the divorce. word divorce. That's a uh -huh. noun for the word divorce. It's a legal dissolution of a marriage by court or other competent body. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Sister Mel or Brother Rock? Yes, so I say it's to dissolve a marital agreement by breaking apart, dividing. Or any of Very good. Very good. Uh, Sister Lubin? We can't hear you if you're talking. You're on mute. Yeah. That's right. That's why you can't hear me. I'm driving. But anyway, based on the description, Pastor, that you have just given, um, that you could marry almost anything, um, plants, human beings, you know, whatever. Um, my definition <laughs> um, is uh, you a person or a thing trying to separate something that had been, been um united together it's been joined together as one and then you're trying to separate you're trying to separate this thing that was already joined together so um it's already been marinated it how you know it's been so knitted together that if you try to separate it you're going to take um part of the thing or the person with you um like for a lifetime and that's how i see it Correct. Exactly. Just like the word marry. And again, I do apologize. Um, the word shouldn't be marriage. It should be marry. Right. Marry. Right. On the, on the screen it should be marry. And it doesn't have to be the or more. I know the or more is throwing people off. You can just leave it at two. Right. Two united is one. And the key part to the definition of marriage is the uniting as one. As Sister Jen said, the word divorce means to tear apart. That's what divorce means, to tear apart, right? So it means to tear apart something that's one or something that's whole and tear it apart into two, right, or more. But we can remove the more again and to tear apart. So the key thing here that we understand with marriage on the natural is the uniting, two uniting is one, for marry and divorce is tearing apart the one into two. Any questions so far? All right. No. So that's the natural, right? That's just the dictionary definition. That's the, just the the generic, no flavoring dictionary definition. Okay. Now, when we talk about humans now, marrying humans, take a look at the screen and there's two pictures there. And it says, which best represents marriage and why? Sister Lubin? Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to, um, again, in my spirit, I'm saying that when you try to separate, you tear that thing apart, you're going to take a piece of, of the thing or the person with you, and it's going to be a lifetime thing because it's been so intertwined. Because if you're one and you separate, you tear it apart, you're going to take a piece of me and I'm going to take a piece of you. And um, I don't see how you're gonna get that out. That That is actually my next question. Uh, so um, you're Hello. correct. <laughs> Sister Mel? So the first one, the concentric circles, more is representative of a marriage than the two separate wedding bands. Those bang bands can be lost, but the concentric one, we are inter intertwined together as one. Okay, very good. Anybody so the, else? The left side. Right? So Sister Mel says the one on the left more represents um, a marriage because they're one. 
right? They're intertwined, they're locked, they're one. And the other uh, does not because they're not um, intertwined. They're not locked. Now everybody pay attention, pay attention, right? Some couples, remember, we're still natural. We haven't gone spiritual yet. We're still natural. Some couples are together, but they're not married. All right? That picture on the right, the two rings are together. Right? The one on the left they're married, they're locked, they've become one. And in our minds, humans in the natural, we say we wanna get married, we say we're married, but in reality, we are together. We're not married. And we never actually become one. And marriage means to unite as one. Now let's go to what Jen was talking about. Which picture best represents divorce and why? Which one of these two pictures best represents divorce and why? Minister Sylvia. Excuse me. Yes, Pastor, the one on the left signifies divorce because they're not intertwined, they're not together, it's broken up, finito, it's over. Very good. Sister Mel? And the one yes, that the I, separate. Oh, Sister Sylvia, go ahead. I'm saying, and the one on the right, they're like separated, they're not, they're not divorced, they're together, but they're not mingled, they're not intertwined, so they're separated. They're divorced, yes, they're divorced, but the one on the left is, looks like it's really final. That's a finality in the relationship. Very good. Sister Mel? Yes, sir. I agree with um, Minister Sylvia, uh, the one on the left, because as you can clearly see, the rings are broken and it's shattered, and um, uh, that's it. The divorce, that's a divorce. Correct. And this is what Sister, uh, Sister Jennifer said. When you tear something apart, right? You leave pieces. As Sister Jen said, if we were actually together, if we were actually together, that divorce is gonna tear part of me. And it's going to tear part of you. Now, you look at Hollywood. These people get married five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Now, are they really married? <laughs> or are they just together? Uh, just a wedding. They like weddings. Yeah, they like weddings. Yeah. Our brother Joshua says divorce leaves both parties broken. Both parties involved are permanently damaged. Now, here's the thing. You're right, brother Bernard, brother Bernard, brother Joshua. Here's the thing. Some people, when they divorce, they either don't realize that they're damaged or they neglect the fact that they're damaged. And then now, or they're just so happy to get out of the divorce, they don't care <laughs> about what potential damage was done to them or to their spouse. But your damaged goods, as Joshua said, none the less. All right, very good. So now we have this general understanding of marriage in the natural. And Mr. Sylvia says, and the children end up suffering and 
uh, fallen out of place, feel out of place, yet it will take much counseling and affirmation to restore what has been broken in therapy. Correct. Exactly. Um, fast forwarding to one of the points. This is why if a person was divorced, right, and they came to me um, with the desire to get married again, and again, getting ahead of ourselves, I would give them personal counseling, right, before anything else. Because you have to address that brokenness, right? Some people don't want to do that. Some people don't want the marriage part, the marriage counseling part. Or they don't want the, the divorce counseling. <laughs> they just want marriage counseling. No, you need divorce counseling, <laughs> right? Okay. Now let's look at the spiritual the spiritual reality of marriage. Now, all the things that we discussed are good in the natural. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is this covenant agreement that is made um, between a man and a woman. And um, God is the third person in the marriage. All of those are correct. And is the uniting of two. All of those are correct. But all of those are natural. Even though we've included God, even if, though we've included God in it, it's still natural. Even though we say it's a covenant relationship and covenant is usually a spiritual word, it's still natural. That's not the, those are not the spiritual reality of what marriage is, right? So let's talk about what marriage is. And here in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, it says, for this reason, this is Paul speaking, right? And he's referring way back to Genesis with the first marriage of Adam and Eve. And he says, for this, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united. There's that word, marry. Marry. That's what you marry means to unite. Be married to his wife. Now that you're united, that's your wife. And the two will be one flesh. Now, here's what Paul, that's verse 31 in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. But here, what Paul goes on to say in verse 32, immediately after he tells you what marriage is, the next thing he said is this is a profound mystery. What is the mystery? Because he says, I'm not talking about man and woman. All this time, we think this term, united, become one, we think this term applies to a man and a woman and this earthly concept of marriage. But what, does, what is Paul saying is the mystery? What is Paul saying is behind this? Sister Mel or Brother Rock? Yes, sir. So I'm taking a guess by saying we are married to the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna say no to that. <laughs> okay, and then I see Sister Sylvia says it's a covenant. Okay, I'm not gonna say no to that. As a matter of fact, I, I am, I am. When we did the natural, those things are correct. That it's a covenant, that God is involved in the covenant agreement between man and woman. Can you but repeat that question? Spiritually, spiritually, what is marriage? Now, everybody follow. The most famous scripture we that we know about marriage is for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife and the two will become one flesh. That's the most famous scriptures. The earliest is the Adam and Eve and throughout all our lives and down through the years, we use that to define marriage. 
school now, when he speaks between marriage, a man and a woman, Paul now, when Paul speaks about this same scripture, he says, I'm not speaking about man and woman. He says, I'm going to show you a profound mystery. There's something else. What is this something else that that scripture can, can be talking about? Uh, Sister Jen and Sister Joanne. Um, I, I, um, I'm saying it's, it's spirit to spirit, like a father, son and Holy Spirit, that relationship, um, where it's, it's, it's the marrying of, 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 um, of spirit to spirit. If I get it right. Okay. All right. Sister Joanne. Uh, the only thing that came to my mind is that uh, we, the believers of Christ, will be his bride. Okay, very good. Very good. And Brother Joshua, you want to speak? So, um, <clears throat> I think Paul is uh, painting a spiritual picture through a physical reality with marriage um the way a man ought to ought to love his woman the way a man loves his woman under the context and covenant of marriage uh ought to be a living breathing picture image expression of jesus's love for the church um and how did he love his church he died for his church so Husbands signed up to die. <laughs> it's tough tonight. This I is like that, right. brother John. That's, That's right. right. That's That's right. right. <laughs> this is tough tonight. Oh, it's gonna get tough. I love it. Love it. A plus. A plus. It gets an A. It's plus. gonna get tougher. It's gonna get tougher. Y'all stay with me. It's gonna get tougher. This is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying this marriage thing really doesn't have anything to do with man and woman. That's fair, sir. He said uh -huh. the screen. You could just read it. Can you all see the screen? He says, this is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. That's the marriage. Christ and the church. You see, when God created everything in the earth, everything in the earth is a shadow or a model of some spiritual reality in heaven. You follow? No. He didn't create man in, it, in, in its own entity. Hmm. How was man created? In the image of Christ. In the image of Christ. In the image of God. Right? Amen. And where, where did Christ come from? Christ, if you read, I think it's Psalms, the 28th chapter, it says that he came forth from the Father. Amen. Where did woman come from? She came forth from the man. From the man, yeah. God could have made a man separate and then a woman separate. Amen. Everything is modeled after realities in heaven. So if in fact man is going to be created in God's image, Christ comes forth from God. God brought woman forth from man, right? Uh, Brother Chanda says the husband is Christ and the wife, the church. Very good. Now. Pastor Paul. Yes. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. sis. Okay. I'm listening. Oh, as you were saying, it's a spiritual 
uh, context, according to Ephesians 5, and also Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14 said, Turn, O backsliding children, say the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I'll bring you to Zion. So God is married to the backslider. Very, very good. And that was the scripture we studied a little while back. We're in Jeremiah. Now watch this. Yes. Everybody watch. Everybody watch. Because it's not just man and woman are representatives. They're representatives. That's why they were supposed to get married. Christ, God didn't bring Eve forth from Adam so Eve can just live her own life and Adam can live his own life and they be separate and Adam feel he he never needs a woman and woman feels he never she never needs a man no he designed them to be one to link to be one now a uh, man and woman does not only represent their representatives, man and women, man and woman, and marriage is a earthly representation of a spiritual reality. One is Christ and the church, and the second, I'll show you now. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul writes, but I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ. That's Christ in the church. And the head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. This is what that relationship and existence of man and woman represents. They represent Christ and man or Christ and the church and God and Christ. Any questions, any comments? Is there anyone that does not understand? Because this is important for us to move on. Is any anyone has any questions? Is anyone who doesn't understand? And the reason why this is important is because if we just simply understand the natural meaning of what marriage is, an agreement, that would cause us to operate in a particular way. But if we realize that marriage represents something, something in heaven, then we would operate a different way when it comes to marriage. Okay. All right. And now I am assume everybody understands this part and these are the scriptures. So here again, man and woman man and woman are representatives of a spiritual reality. Their union is a representation of a spiritual reality. Now what we're gonna do, we looked at the natural, we looked at the spiritual, now we're gonna Put these two together, and then we're going to ask some questions. Okay, so in the beginning, we're going way back, right? We're not talking about the time of Moses. We're not talking about the time of Jesus. We're not talking about the time of now. <laughs> we're talking about in the beginning, right? When everything reflected 
God and Christ. Here's the question. In the very beginning, we've studied, we went over the natural, we went over the spiritual. It's just God and Christ in the beginning. In the beginning was the word, the word was with, was with God and the word was God. So it was in the beginning. So it's just God and Christ. This union or triunion, whatever term you're comfortable with. How long is marriage to God and Christ? They're married. They're united, right? It means to unite, be one. It means to be one. How long is marriage for God and Christ? Anybody? Eternal. It's eternal. Correct. It's forever. It's eternal. Here's the question. Why? Why is it eternal? As to Sylvia. Because that's how God created it from before the foundations of the world. For it to be an eternal uh, relationship. That's what, he, that's what he wanted. And when we come to Christ. Not exactly. Yes. No, he didn't create it. He didn't create it. The union is what is. He didn't yeah. create the union. It, it, it just is. The Amen. Father, that's what this, that's what that's what for, that's what John says. John says, "In the beginning was the Word." How many is that? There's one. There's one. And the Word was with God. That's Amen. two. Yeah. Right. That's two. And the Word was <laughs> was God. That's Amen. union. That's married. That's how it was from the very beginning. beginning. So Amen. that dynamic, he didn't create that dynamic. That's just the way it is. That's how it is. That's how it is. Um, uh, who had a hand? Someone had a hand. I do. Jennifer. Oh, go ahead. Then so, the mail. so um, that being said, that it can it cannot be separated one from the other because it just is. If something just is, you cannot separate it. It cannot be separated. Even if you try, right. it can't. Correct. Correct. Sister Mel and then Joshua. Yes, sir. So I said, you said, why is marriage eternal? Because God is eternal. Yes. Sin. Correct. Brother Joshua. I was just trying to think out loud. So um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we define marriage. Uh, we defined it spiritually. Um, we established that marriage was a flesh, a material uh, image of a, a spiritual reality with regard to Jesus loving his church, loving his bride. Um, Correct. Isn't marriage also a, uh, an image of the Trinity? Yes, yeah, well, correct. That's Am I why going too fast? No, you're not going fast. You, you. Okay. Here, that's why I said, um, if you look look on the screen, First Corinthians mm -hmm. eleven three, it says, "But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ." Right? We mm -hmm. got that. That's Christ in man, Christ in the church, and the head of the woman is man. We got that, man and woman. Mm -hmm. And then he adds, "And the head of Christ is God." So there is this. Like I said, unity or triunity, mm -hmm. right? That marriage also represents. Right. It represents in the beginning. It, it doesn't it matter. It's what it is. The father and the son. Here he identifies the father and the son. But we also know that the spirit, which is three now, and these three are one, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So that it's that unity. It's that marrying Right, um, it's that unity that exists between or with amongst the Godhead, right? Yeah. So you're correct. That is. So when he creates now, <clears throat> when he creates man and woman, man and man and woman is reflective of mm -hmm. that unity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say that um, 
the reason marriage is forever is because the relationship between the father and the son is eternal. The relationship between the son and the spirit is eternal. And being that marriage is a reflection of these such relationships, therefore it's a return, an eternal uh, union. Correct. You said it, Sister Mel said it, Sister Sylvia and Sister Jen. Correct. It's because the nature of the unified parties is eternal. They're eternal. And what did God say? I am the Lord thy God. I change not. So the answer for how long is marriage, that's the easy one. When it's God, right? When it's God and, the, and Christ or God, Christ and the Holy Ghost, right? That's easy, right? It's forever. Next question. Remember, these are three questions we had from the beginning. Should any of the parties divorce? Remember what divorce means. Divorce means to tear apart. Should any of the parties divorce for any reason? When it's just God now. Um, Sister Mel. Oh, so you're talking about the three the triune God, not not man and woman? No, 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 no. Everybody follow. It's just God now. Remember, in the beginning, we're talking about in the beginning. Remember, in the mm -hmm. beginning was the Word, and the Word was mm -hmm. with God, and the Word was God. There's nothing created. There's nothing created. It's just the unity or the triunity of the Godhead. Should any party within the Godhead divorce for any reason? No, sir. I don't think so. Okay. Anybody? Why you don't think she's... I say no. You, no. No. A bold no. No. <laughs> no. So it's never. It's never. It's not possible for them to divorce. Okay. Very good. Why? Why? The, the son is never gonna divorce the father. The father is never gonna divorce the son. The son is never gonna divorce the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is never, it's not gonna happen, it's never. My question now is why? Mother Oliver? Uh, no, Pastor, I didn't raise my hand, hand for to answer your question. I had a question. So let everybody answer your question. And then you can say, and then I can pose my question. Fair is enough. That, is that okay? Yes. All uh, right. Brother, I'll, I'll, I mean, no. Sister I'll, Jen. I'll give my answer. Um, as we stated before, that this is this um unity, put a hand up there, man. This unity is eternal. It. It's, it's, uh, it's in, eternal. And since it's eternal, it cannot be separated together. It cannot, it cannot be separated. Very good. That's just, just, just the facts. It cannot be separated. They, um, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost can never be separated from each other. Never, ever. Right, so, it's three in one. That's how it is. Correct. Um, Brother Bernard and then Mother Alva. Yeah. Happy birthday, everybody said, Sister Jackie, happy birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday to you, Sister Jackie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday Sister amen, Jackie. amen, amen, amen. Thank again. you. Amen. Happy yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Correct. The one in three. Three in one. Yes. The three in one. They walk together and never disagree. Exactly. Yeah. This is correct. There's no disagreeing in them. They're one. <laughs> correct. Mm -hmm. it's, so that's why I said when we use the word agreement or covenant, those are earthly terms. That's mm -hmm. not how it was in the beginning. There was no covenant. The father didn't make a covenant with the son. The son didn't make a covenant with the father. They're one. They, they no know they made a covenant. Then your left hand makes a covenant with your right hand. 
It, it, it's one. We're one. It's one body. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Mother Oliver. But in the natural, in the natural, there's a covenant. And we're going to get to that. Um, uh, uh, who was it? Mother yes. Oliver. Now, I hope I'm not throwing a monkey wrench <laughs> in the mix. I mm-hmm. asked this all at the very beginning. I put it in the chat. You didn't see it. Now, what I said and what I'm asking, the tra- traditional vows state whom God or whom, what God has joined together, let not man or let no man put asunder. And my question then is, how do we know who God has joined together? Be it sinner or saint? How do we know who God has joined together? And does that take any part in the equation? Does that play any role? We're going to answer your question, mother. We're going to answer your question. As soon as we introduce man, we're going to answer your question. We haven't introduced man yet. Right. And this was my point. Every time we ask these questions, how long is marriage for? Should anyone divorce for any reason? Uh, Should they get married or any one of them? Infidelity, um, all of these marriage questions, we start these questions and answers to them in the earth and with man. But man neither created himself nor the concept of marriage. So what we have to do is not look at the shadow, we have to look at the reality. So now we're looking at the reality and then we're going to introduce the representative or the shadow, right? Um, So should any party divorce for any reason? The answer is never. And the reason why is because both parties or all three parties are perfect and not evil, a situation will never arise within the Godhead for one party to divorce another. They're one, they're perfect, they're holy, they're not evil, they're not self-seeking, so there is no situation Within Godhead, right? Within Godhead that can arise that would cause a party to divorce. Amen, sir. Right? Okay, let's deal with the third question. Should either party remarry? That one is easy. What's the answer to that one? Between a man and a woman? No, we haven't introduced men. We're just talking about God and the Godhead. We're not talking about the, we're not talking about men and women. No, sir. Again, men and women are representatives of marriage. They're representing men. Marriage, I'm gonna say, I'm trying, I'm gonna say something tough to understand, as Paul said. And Jesus said it too. Marriage has nothing to do with men and women. Has nothing to do with men and women. They are representatives of what marriage really is. So the question is, should they remarry? Sister Loretta? Well, if they should, I think that's kind of like, you know, um, I don't know. It, it, It doesn't even sound like that should even be posed as a question because if they can't separate, then how could they remarry? That's it. Correct. Correct. It's not a trick question. Oh, Sister Loretta wasn't there at the beginning. But I said at the beginning is these are the three questions and variations of these three questions that we have about marriage with men and women. How long is marriage for? Should a party divorce for any reason? And should they Re, should any of the parties remarry? What I'm posing is that we approach it wrong by asking men <laughs> what to do 
with regards to something spiritual. We need to look at the spiritual model and ask these questions, see what they yield, and then let man know, <laughs> right? So um, was there another hand? Yes, sir. That was my hand. Go ahead, sis. So the answer is no. And who would marry? <laughs> right. Who is God going to remarry? Who is the father going to, who's the father going to unite with? He's perfect. The son Amen. is perfect. The Amen. Holy Ghost is perfect. Amen. Who's going to leave perfection for imperfection? That's right. Okay. So if they never divorce, there's no need to get married, as Sister Loretta said. And the union, the relationship between the father and the son, son and the father, the Holy Ghost, is in perfect peace. Yes, it's sir. in perfect peace. Perfect unison. Yes. It's perfect union. So if if and if, if hypothetically they could, they would be leaving peace for no peace. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let us introduce man. Right? Because the Bible says, now he created man in his image. And from man, he brought forth woman, just like Christ is brought forth from the father and the spirit comes forth from the father or son and or son. All right. Uh, let me get my pointer back. Okay. So now we introduce man. And man is not, I put man in orange because man is not God. He doesn't have the same spirit as God but he's created in God's image, right? So now God, and he's innocent, he's innocent. When God created man and woman, they were innocent. So when God creates them in the beginning, how long is marriage for for man and women? Eternal. Very good. It's forever. Why? Why is it forever? I bet you you don't get this one. Because they're in the image of and likeness of God, and God is eternal. On uh, so so therefore, um, their, their marriage should be eternal before they sin. Okay. Yeah, their marriage. Why is why is man and woman eternal? Their marriage eternal. Mother, mother Oliver. Okay, now you are you speaking again of the spiritual analogy? Okay, everybody follow I, me. I, I, I tell you, I'll tell you why. Well, let me answer, then I can see. When you say forever, the vows again, I'm going to refer to the vow to this about until death do us part. And I say that to say this: we are eternal soul. My husband passed away 16 years ago. I'll meet him in heaven, but we won't be married in heaven. We're gonna and, get yet to we'll, that, we'll, and yet we only live for eternity, throughout eternity. We're going to get to that. End. Pardon? We're going to get to that. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to make right. sure I answer that. Okay. Right. Why is it forever for man and woman? Um, Sister Janet and then J Brother Joshua. If you're talking, Sister Janet, I can't hear you. You want to take yourself off mute, Sister Janet? Is she still talking? I can't see her. No, no. I'll, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, saying, what I said, when God made man and then woman, they were to live forever. There was no time limit on their life right. until until that period when they, they ate of the fruit. Amen. But for, they were supposed to be there forever. So they, they would be married forever. 
Yeah. There's Very no time good. limit. Very good. See, you see how when we do it this way, I like things to make sense. That's right. right. Go ahead, sis, brother Joshua. I was going to say, um, since Jesus is the model um, with his relationship to the church, um, divorce would have been equivalent to him being on the cross saying, you know what? I'm tired of the spit. I'm tired of these nails. I'm tired of all these people hollering and screaming for me to die. Y'all are all trash. I'm out. I mean, he gets off the cross and doesn't die for our sins. <laughs> brother, you on fire. We're not there yet, but brother, you are on fire. You are going to preach. You got to come. I'm giving you a Sunday morning. <laughs> you have got to preach that. <laughs> Marriage and divorce. That was God. That was Jesus's time to say, I am out. That was deep, right? That was deep. That was good, brother. That was good. But as Sister Janet said, Man and woman, man and woman were created to live forever. Now they did not have the ability to live forever in themselves. What did they have to do to live forever? Anybody know? When God first created them. Stick with the plan. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they had to do something to, to live forever. They was God. Life. Okay. Huh? No. Tree the tree of life. They had to partake of the tree of life. So he married them, right? And as long as they partook of the tree of life, they would be married forever. Ever. And the model would the model on earth would match the reality in heaven. Now, should any party, man and woman now, not God and Jesus, man and woman, in the beginning, when they're first created, should any party divorce for any reason? The same before the fall. Before the fall. Before the fall, no. Hey, no. Correct. No. Because they were one. Okay. Who, who had a hand? I don't know who had a hand. Just I said speak. I said no to <laughs> sir. No. Okay, you said no. Sister Loretta, is that you? Yeah. Um I I I noticed that Sister Joanne said well, you tried to ask for clarification if it was before the fall. I would say before or after the fall, no. We're going to get to after the fall. Okay. We didn't get to after the fall yet, but before the fall. We're going to get to after the fall next. That's the next thing we're going to do. We take this step by step. So before the fall, we all agree, never, never, never should you divorce. Because mm -hmm. they're created, their relationship is created to model that which is in Amen. So if your oh. relationship is Sorry, created. Somebody's Hello? got a mute. I hear background noise. Oh. Somebody got a mute. So if, your relationship, if their relationship is created to model that which is in heaven, this is one of the most important things I can tell you tonight. If it's created to model that which is in heaven, and heaven would never divorce, then the model should never divorce. Does that make sense? I know this is tough tonight, man. This is tough tonight. I feel like getting off my own Bible study. This is tough tonight. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Okay. Um, Go ahead, sis. Yeah, um, I, my comment is that um, before the fall, no before. one would have a desire to be um to be divorced, to be separated. You know, so it's only because of the fall why you know we um end up having all these options. Figure we can make up our own options. I think oh, it's negated, um, the, the the previous um reason for oh. the union. 
Yes, you are correct, Sister Jen. Look here. Why? Why should they never divorce? They have no knowledge of evil. Amen. <laughs> they have no knowledge of evil. They have no knowledge of tearing each other apart and putting each other through all of this. Right, they, have no of that. they have no knowledge of being selfish, fulfilling their own desires. They have no, they have, they don't even, it's not even a concept to them. Amen. So because yeah. before the fall, they have no knowledge of this, no knowledge of evil, there is no situation that will ever arise. Yes, sir. For them to divorce. They, sub <laughs> listen, listen, saints, they submit to each other oh. as designed. And the world which God created supports their union. Yeah. Everywhere they go, everything that God created screams at them. I am proud and celebrate your marriage. <laughs> it's how God created this thing. Right? And when Adam, when, when Eve was brought forth from Adam, what did Adam say? Whoa! My goodness! Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Yes. Yes my flesh. You see, you got to understand this. That wasn't, uh, what's that thing Loretta says? Loretta says this to me. She says, um, um, that, that we should use, uh, like vain flattery. That wasn't vain flattery. That was his accurate description. She came from him. That's why I said they were one. Yes. The way Adam perceived him, perceived Eve, was his bone clothed in flesh. Good God. He could no more want to kill that because it came from him. It was his. Right? Kind of sound like Ephesians. <laughs> In any case. Next, last one. Before the fall, should either party remarry? This is easy. Loretta answered it before. Why? It was just them. <laughs> huh? It was just them. There was nobody else but them, and they were one. Correct. <laughs> but if you don't divorce, there's no need to, to remarry. Right? So the answer is no. And all the needs for a relationship, because they were created with the desire to connect, right? You see, in heaven, with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you don't have to create that need because they're one. They're inseparably one. So this is this is this is some deep sea diving tonight. You see, I don't have to create in my right hand the desire to be with my body. It's one, though it's distinct. That's how it is with the Trinity. When God creates man, because they're created in the natural and they're two separate individuals, he creates in the individual man and in the individual woman a longing, a desire to come together and be one, right? When it was just Adam, Adam looked around and he saw all the animals had mates. There was none for him. That was in him to be one with something, right? So the need 
for a relationship is fulfilled peacefully within Eve, within that everything that he ever wanted in a relationship is fulfilled in Eve. And everything Eve ever wanted in a relationship is fulfilled in Adam. So there's no need to divorce or remarry. All right. Now here is where it gets ugly. They sin. Adam and Eve sin. They disobey. And because they disobey, they eat of the fruit and their nature is changed. Now they have knowledge of good and evil and they can choose to do good or evil. Not only that, the good and evil that they define is not God's good and evil. They determine within themselves what is good and what is evil. So what's good to Adam now may not be good to Eve. What's evil to Eve may not be evil to Adam. They each have that ability. They don't have the common standard. They each have within them that ability to determine good and evil and to be self-seeking, self-satisfying. God, as a result of their disobedience, curses the world. So now where the world celebrated their union, now the world is cursed. All right. Now, let's see if you guys are still on point. Let's bring cursed man and woman. So I changed it. I made them gray now. That represents the curse. The, the, the yellow represents God. The orange aura represents innocence. And the gray aura represents sin, sinful man in a cursed world. Now let's ask the same three questions. How long is marriage for? I bet you you get this wrong. How long is marriage for? After the fall. Oh, I got no, oh, no, I got no. my hand up there. Oh, sorry. So I got a bunch of hands. I'm sorry. Um, Joshua, I don't know. That's the only way. I, I can't see all the hands, so y'all can just go ahead, Joshua. Or, or, or you want Jackie to go. Said, oh, Kristen. Let Kristen go. Kristen, my daughter. Go ahead, Kristen. Yes, yes. Everybody so the can question, go. The question is, how long is marriage for? Yes. Right? Marriage is still eternal because that never changed. God and Christ, well, Christ and Jehovah, God the Father never changed. It was man who changed. So the concept of marriage and what marriage is, is still eternal. All right. Okay. Um, who wants to go next? Joshua, Loretta, Jackie, doesn't make a difference. I, I saw those three hands. Janet. Uh, oh, Janet. Janet. Janet was up first. Okay, Janet, go ahead. Sorry, sis. Now? Until yeah. death to the part. So she got you're gonna die. Say that again? Until death to the part. Why? Because before they lived, they would have lived forever before the fall. Now there's a time, there's a time on them. No matter if they lived 120 years, somebody's gonna die. Why are they gonna die? Because they now ate from the, the tree of good and they know evil. They know good and bad. Yes, and you're 900% you know, correct. I'm just trying to pull out something very specific. Let me see if somebody else wants to jump in and pull out what I'm trying to pull out. Uh, I don't know who had a hand first, Loretta, Joshua, Jen. Oh, I was, I was just, I'll just piggyback on what um, Sister Janet said, because that's exactly what I was going to say, that um, 
death is the only thing that's going to um, separate them because the word tells us that, you know, I, I when I find a scripture, I'll let you know, but I'm just paraphrasing right now. So it just basically <laughs> says that um, when, you know, um, a man and a woman basically is supposed to stay married and the only thing that breaks that that bond or that, um, you know, her being bound to him is death. And if- Why? Well, if You're correct, but why? It wasn't that way in the beginning. No, why? it wasn't that way in the beginning because- um, because Janet death had it. I just, I'm just looking for the very specific. There's a reason okay. why till death do us part. There's a reason why. Well, can I say, can I just throw something go, in? Go, oh. go ahead. Go, go ahead, Sister Janet. Go ahead. On, on when they ate of the, 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 the tree that God told them not to eat of. Uh huh. Because he said, if once they ate of that tree, yes. they would surely die. Yes. Yes. That is it. Oh, and brother Joshua is hands up all over the place. <laughs> Good. Joshua, then sister uh, Jen, and then sister Melrose. All right. I'm not going to take up too much time. I'll try not to anyway. Uh, can you repeat your question one more time? Why? Why is it? Why does? Why is it that um, marriage is no longer uh, forever? That marriage is now till death. <clears throat> um, because when we're on the earth, um, while we're here, God designed marriage in such a way where we already established that it is a representation of um, the gospel of Jesus loving the church. That's an earthly reality even though it's a, it's a, it's a heavenly, uh, uh, it's, it's heavenly because it's God's, um, sorry, I'm thinking out loud. So, so God intended for marriage to be this, this, this picture that the world can see, you know, our marriage is also a witness to marriage is supposed to be a witness to the world so they can see Christ's love for the church. Christ, uh, that that's supposed to be a, uh, a, a reality for the world when we pass on into heaven it is no longer the god they don't need the gospel in heaven <clears throat> yeah that's right yes and as sister oh. um jen said um when they sinned remember what god said god said the day you eat of that tree you will surely what die, die. Yeah. So now, because they ate of the tree, every human being born of Adam and Eve must die. So when these two individuals, man and a woman, get married, death, the, 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 the judgment, the sentence of death ends their marriage. This is tough tonight. Uh, we, not, I, we don't go ahead. Go ahead. No, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I found yeah, I found the uh scriptures. First Corinthians 739. It says uh, a woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone, anyone she wishes, but he must belong to the Lord. Right. But the, what I'm doing is uh, explaining why that scripture is said. Like, it's not, it's not that um, Paul or Jesus is just, um, uh, uh, just tossing out laws for people to obey. It's not like Jesus is a legalist. And that's the problem. We approach... Marriage is this legalistic thing. Oh, I got to obey the law. No, you don't have to obey any law. You have to understand the spiritual reality. The reason why it's the reason why it's till you die 
is because men and women will die and they die because of sin. It's the judgment of sin. We, uh, we, we have to understand that all marriages, this is tough. This, uh, this is tough. This is for those who can receive it. All marriages are done in judgment. Amen. It's really people getting married behind bars, behind <laughs> spiritual bars, two inmates getting married. <laughs> We're in judgment. That's why we die. That's why we get sick and die. The man is under judgment and the world is cursed. And such all these activities under the sun, including marriage, is done by two individuals with death sentences. All right. Um, Amen. Yes, go ahead, mother. May I just add something else? Another mm -hmm. layer to it. Mm -hmm. If God had not driven Adam and Eve out of the garden and placed the cherubims, cherubim there with flaming swords, they would have st still have access to the tree of life and would live forever, never die, but live in sin, live cursed forever. Correct. Correct. And now, they would, dead. Since marriage is forever, they would be married. Correct. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if I want to ask this question yet. Let me just get through this. Pastor, I have something to say, Pastor. Oh, go ahead, sis. Um, okay. Uh, so since um, there's a scripture that I, you know, that says in the beginning it was not so when it comes to marriage. And, um, but because of the hardness of your heart, you know, Moses wrote the, the um, bill of divorcement or, you know, to be separated, you know, <laughs> separated. <laughs> um, so I'm saying that, um, what was I saying? That um, God, he, he uh, you know, you, God now allows you to make your own choices because you made your, cho your own choices um, to sin against God. So now that you have made your choice um, because you did that, um, you're still in marriage, just you still making your own choices. And that's why, you know, when you make your own choices, you end up making big blunders and, um, you know, and creating um, more chaos or, or a cause for separation and divorce. Very, very good. Very good. Um, and we're going to get to that. Just quickly, I want everybody to understand in that scripture. See, this is why I'm giving you the framework so that when you read, when you have the framework and you go back and read those scriptures, you understand what they mean. When God said, when Jesus said, it was not that way in the beginning. Somebody, anybody, quickly, what is he talking about? What is Jesus talking about when he says it wasn't that way in the beginning? In the beginning, it was not so. Who's going to scream? Look on the screen and tell me what is it that he's talking about? Anybody? He was talking about divorce. No, no. Yeah, he, we weren't yeah. intended to die. But what was this beginning that he was talking about? Was that he not addressing what Moses did? He allowed a divorce. He allowed. Yes, but he was said he it wasn't to what Moses like that. allowed. Yes, he said M Moses Moses allowed the certificate of divorce, but it was not like that in the beginning. In other words, there was no divorce in the beginning. My question is, what is this quote unquote beginning that Jesus was talking about when there was no divorce? Look on the screen. The very, the very beginning. What scripture? I don't see any scripture on the screen. It's in number three. You don't have to look. Y'all got to follow me. You don't have you to look. You don't have to need. Oh, because that is forever. Yeah, look on the screen. He's talking pre-fall. Marriage is forever. He's talking about pre-fall. It wasn't like that. That's the beginning he's talking about. He's talking about the beginning when it was him and the father in heaven. There was no divorce. No, he's talking about when he created man 
in the very beginning. There because was no divorce. But after the fall, now, as Sister Jen said, men's hearts became hardened. In the beginning, it was not so. Pre-fall, it was not so. I'm sorry, Pastor. I don't see what I don't. You said they would look at the screen for a scripture. I don't see any scripture on the screen. I didn't tell you look for the screen for a scripture. Oh. I said look at the screen the answers and answer there. the question. Oh, okay. There's two. There's two. Two. Uh, time I think frame. I found it. You don't. I, no, you don't have to give me the scripture. You don't have to give no, me the scripture. I can see what you got on the screen. Oh, right. You don't have to give me the scripture. Right. What I need you guys to do is understand the concept, right? Understand the concept, concept, because you're going. You hear scriptures where he says it wasn't that way in the beginning. So the question is, what is this beginning that Jesus is talking about when there was no divorce? What is he talking I about? I think it's number that two. Is, that is before the fall. Before the fall, yeah. Because both parties, both there was parties no perfect divorce. and not evil. Yeah. Correct. A situation correct. would never arise. That's it, correct. Yes. It's, but now, after the fall, people's <laughs> hearts are hardened. Okay. In the Bible. Um, right? How long is marriage for? Till death. Why? Mankind under judgment for sin. And the cost or the wages of sin is death. Now, here's, it gets a little tricky. Should any party divorce for any reason? Oh, uh, I bet you nobody gets this. In the name of Jesus. No. I say no. You say no. Okay, we got one no. <laughs> what is always going to say no? <laughs> you say, I say no, yes. no. I say yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Before y'all go to war, let me I put my yes. answer on the board. Let me put my answer on the board. I'm going to give you scripture, sir. Okay, you yes, can, but I'm look with, at my answer. Yes. Look at my answer. Yes, no, depends. That's the answer. The answer is no. First, no. Second, yes. And third, depends. And that's why uh, yes. Is very good. Life. Now, the now you can one. look. You can look. Watch this. Watch this. Who's the person not liking my PowerPoint and and and, and writing on it? <laughs> You're scribbling uh, all over. Now what? If you clearly, you can see a pattern. If you look at pre-fall, the answers are the same between, watch this, y'all, pay attention. Pre, before the fall, the, the answers are the same to the questions with God and Jesus and man and woman. Forever, forever, mm -hmm. never, never, no, no. Let me have after the another fall, piece of the cake. After the fall, there's a change. Let me have another piece so of the cake. So God now changes mm -hmm. the time for marriage, right? It's not hard to believe that divorcing Something happened. for particular reasons. I don't know. Call him and find out. Um, did you put it in the refrigerator? Or you you did the wrong person, Rock. <laughs> okay. Now, who wants to say no? Uh, Sister Loretta, you said no. Give us a reason I said, why. I said no, absolutely not, 100%. And I have scripture to back it up. If you, if you want to give me scripture, you can t give me scripture, but just explain. Uh, because um, I like what, um, I think it was Kristen, I'm not sure who said it, um, that, uh, that because, just because things have changed with man, right, from innocence to now having a knowledge of good and evil does not change God nor his standards. 
know, he tells us in his word that he never changes. And so, you know, his standards, his laws, statutes, and commandments, they all follow him. And, and you know, they are part of him. And so to say that because of man, he changes would be, you know, would make him less of a God, you know? And so he says in his word, you know, over and over and over, there are tons of scriptures that support the idea of um, marriage being a union that cannot be separated. Um, the scripture that I've read before, 1 Corinthians 7 9, now that scripture, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was after the fuck, after the fall. And he was specifically talking to one of the most, um, you know, one of the most worldly churches on the planet, right? Am I, am I right there? Uh, Apostle Paul was writing this letter to the church, which was modern day, you know, church people, so to speak. And um, they had a lot of issues. And yet he said a woman is bound to her husband as long as she lives. But if her husband dies, she is free to marry as long as that person is in the Lord. And so what, what Apostle Paul is saying here is just a reflection of God's commandment. Amen. Did not change. Now, um, before, before I call on somebody else, the person who changed is not God. God did not change. Right. Man changed. So just because man changes doesn't mean that, uh, you know, God is any less God. Um, man changed. And because man changed, um, uh, God clearly changed the dynamics related to man, related to man, not related to his institution of marriage, but related to man practicing the institution. Because God could have said, um, marriage is forever. That's how it was. That's how he designed it. But when you die, that marriage is dissolved. He could have said that, as mother said, you have an eternal soul, right? He could have said that the two eternal souls now, when they get to heaven, they continue their marriage. That's what the Mormons believe, right? That you continue that marriage. But because, again, the, the important part that you have to understand here is that there was a change in man. So man is under judgment. Uh, I'm gonna give it to you on the next one. I don't wanna explain it now. It's coming up on the next slide. But um, the reason, the thing I'm pointing out is man changed, God didn't change. That part you said is right. Um, God didn't change, man changed. Sister Mel or anybody else? Oh, and I think Loretta has another hand. And Sister Jackie, I see Jackie, Janet, Mel, or Mel, you go first. Well, this question, another question. So in a relationship, um, if the woman and the man is married and there is domestic abuse to the point of um, danger to the person's uh, physical health, should she stay in that marriage? We're going to talk Are about you? that. Oh, okay. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So you want to say something? Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if no, she was go ahead, sis. asking. Go ahead. No, what I'm saying is I wasn't sure if she was asking that to me specifically. Or anyone, was anyone, 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 oh. any, anybody, anyone. Can ask well, well, I mean, I say yes, <laughs> absolutely. If, mm. if, if there's a domestic abuse at the point of death in the marriage, they should I separate. I say absolutely. They should separate. Absolutely, absolutely to what, Loretta? That they should she, stay. Well, she's, a, she's, a, she's asking if there is some, you know, some sin, you know, whatever that uh -huh. sin is, right? Um, 
should, is it okay then to, to, to get a divorce? And I say, no, no, it's not. They should, they should absolutely remain married. Oh, you crazy woman. <laughs> No, I, listen. So no, I, no, no, no. I, I don't think she gets okay, abused. I, can I, can I, 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 I remember. Can I say? Hold on, hold on. Let pass the breed in. Let pass the breed in. Let pass the breed in. All right. They're friends. They're friends, so she can say that, but we don't have to. We understand your uh uh I love Loretta. She knows that. Right. Since you been right, we don't have to go that to route. I love uh, her too, but she was wrong. No, she's no. not. Hold on. Let no, 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 her leave the divorce. Yeah. Take we're gonna out. Get to, we're going to get to it. <laughs> Trust me, we're going to get to it. Let Heavily me just get, divorce. Let, let, let's just go with um, Sister Jackie and then Sister uh, Rod, Brother Roderick or Samantha, and then I'll, I'll address it. Brother Bernard. Oh, Brother Bernard. The, Brother Bernard. Brother sorry. Bernard. Brother Bernard. Sorry. Um, Samantha or Roderick? Yes, it's Samantha. Um, uh -huh. I, I just need to know where scripture is to say that. If a, if a man is abusing you in a relationship, I'm talking about going inside your head or any or anything worse. How, how is it that you're supposed to stay in that marriage? I need scripture. Boy, I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. And then I'm going to give Loretta, Sister Loretta, opportunity to respond. But I, I want to get to the point and then we can discuss it then. Sister Jackie. Okay, so the, <laughs> the original question um, was yes. Oh, yes, depends, right? Is that the question we're supposed to be on? No, the question is not no, yes, depends. My I answer mean, your answer is... was no, yes, depends. Correct. Um, and I believe I had said yes um, regarding divorce because one, um, we're since we're in the book of Jeremiah, that is one of the first things God did with Israel was give them a divorce because that's right their infidelity so infidelity yeah, right. is the grounds for divorce yeah. based on God's design that's and right how he divorced Israel so we can't yes. say God sinned right you can't say God sinned that's, That's what the right. scripture says. The scripture says God issued a divorce to Israel. You see, the yes. truth about the Bible is tough. You know, we say that you know the 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 you know uh, the Jews are you know they belong to God and yes they do, but it also says I write you a certificate of divorce. You're not mine. Not only does it say that, it says I write you a certificate of divorce. I put it in your hands and I kicked you out my house. That's tough. That is tough. Um, okay, so here's uh here's my answer. My hand is up, Pastor. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Love you, sister Lowe, sister Jay, Janet. Mm, praise the Lord. But at the same time. God did all these things, not because um, that was the ideal situation, but he knows the heart of man and he knew that they, they you know, they, their hearts were hardened and that, you know, they weren't going to change from their wicked ways, so to speak. And so, um, but in, in the case where someone is abusive or what have you, you should first separate yourself from the individual, not necessarily divorce the individual, but you separate yourself from the individual. And, you know, going forward, going forward, then, you know, you make next move. But that shouldn't be your initial, um, your initial action. You know, your first, mm. yeah, let's see. Man, come on, put me on, man. You know, the you know, mm. person wants to, to be counseled and stuff like that, you know, you really can be raising your you know, That's what I, that's what I know to be true. All right. All right. Um, brother Bernard, and then I'll go yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, 
like uh, Sister Jackie Ruffin said, what Jeremiah said, he had to divorce. He created the divorce to separate himself from the, the, the Israelite, his, his own people, because they were, they were in the, uh, for infidelity. And just like how now Jesus is the is is the, the the appropriation or the one in the gap to reconcile men back to God in marriage or the church. We're gonna get to we're gonna get to all of that too. We we'll get to I, that. I, I jump ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, you didn't jump ahead. You didn't jump ahead because it's all about Jesus. I see your hand, Loretta. Let me just yes. move this and get to the point where we can discuss this particular part, and I'll let you go. So everybody, watch the screen. I say no. Yes, depends. Because listen to this. You see, again, we 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 can't come to the to the to the Bible and tell the Bible what it says. We can't um, even listen to commentaries or things on a, on a, on YouTube or whatever. We got to let the Bible tell us what, what it says. Now, this is why I'm taking it step by step from the beginning, what it looked like in the beginning. You see, the problem is not the law. The problem is not marriage. The problem is man. Sinful nature and cursed world causes ungodly situations to arise. And people practice divorce acts on each other. Let me tell you this. Have you ever called your spouse, whether verbally or in your, in your mind, you fool? Have you ever done that? Whoever is bold enough no. to say yeah. yes, I go ahead and say it. I paid a so I have that it. Yes, yes, I have. Most you see, to God, you have just divorced your husband. That's a divorce act. It's something, remember, that's why I took this thing step by step. What does the verb divorce mean? To tear. Yeah. Tear up. We think it's a apart. piece of paper, not to God. There's no paper in heaven. <laughs> There's no agreement <laughs> in heaven. There are there is actions and behaviors and motives, right? So you can be in a marriage, mm -hmm. somebody, and not write the certificate of divorce but you're practicing all of these divorce actions on one another and Amen. we think we think we're married and we think god approves of us because i haven't written a divorce god said no the two of y'all are divorced remember what i said earlier god says the two of y'all never even got married who do you think you're fooling you think that you think I recognize that piece of paper when you're out cheating on your wife, when you're beating her in the head? Wow! And you're telling me that you're married to her? Imagine if I if you seen me, you just saw me going like this. <laughs> what man beats his own body? Right. So what we do on earth, these things, these agreements, these certificates, all these things, these are natural. They're earthly. They mean nothing to God. And God and the sinful nature, the so sinful right. nature by default. Hi, listen, to listen to this. Oh. It is impossible. It is impossible. For any two natural human beings to be married, it is impossible. Remember what marriage means. You don't have the ability 
to become one. You have the ability to be together. Now remember, marriage has nothing to do with man and woman. Marriage has to do with God. And when God sees these two individuals coming together, right? In his mind, the two of you do not represent me. You don't. It's very important. So now, because we're dealing with sinful men, we're dealing with sinful men, and both parties, man and woman, do not represent God when they come together. They don't. No more than an unsaved man, listen to this, no more than an unsaved man is in the image and likeness of God is a marriage relation representative of God and his Christ. Be honest. Look at yourself. We already said the woman represents Christ and the man represents, uh, but the woman represents the church. The man represents Christ. Be honest with yourself. Do you honestly women represent the church and men? Do you honestly represent Christ? No, we don't, we not representing the model. So the answer is no. And this, should, this is not I, this should be if. No, if led by the spirit. That's where Loretta's answer comes in, right? If you want to properly represent the model, if the model is your basis, you're going to stay in that thing no matter what happens. You know, it sounds crazy, but again, it has nothing to do with you. Think about what we did to Jesus Christ. Think about what we did to Jesus Christ. That's why Joshua has to preach that message. We did to Jesus Christ what everyone said uh, a man could do with a woman. Would you stay in a relationship if he beat you? There is no woman that has been born in this world that was beaten worse than Jesus Christ by her husband. And Jesus was beaten beyond recognition. And when he looked down, at the individuals who told, who did that to him, he looked to his father, the one who he's one with. You see, because Jesus properly represents the model. And he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know the reality. That's tough. But you got to be led by the spirit to do that. If you're not led by the spirit to do that, then the answer is yes. If the model is defiled. Now, if that man or woman is not upholding his end of the bargain when it comes to the model, right? You can divorce him. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said that if um, um, the spouse is involved in an adulterous relationship, and it's not just really adultery, we'll get into that another day, involved in an adulterous relationship, they've broken the model. It represents Christ in the church. Christ would never do that. You understand? The church, we should never do that. You've defiled the model. According to Jesus, you can get a divorce. And then the depends part is if it can or cannot be worked out. 
The problem is, and we'll get to this, we're trying to put spiritual laws on unspiritual people. You can't do it. You got to have, it's coming up, uh, divorce guidelines for unspiritual people. It is impossible. It is impossible for a man or woman born of Adam and Eve to live up <laughs> to the standards of marriage. It's impossible. Um, Sister Mother Oliver, Sister Mel, Sister Loretta. Um, before you, I don't know whether you want to answer my question before you go to question three for the man and the woman, since you are comparing that. But again, I want to pose the question of the traditional vows whom God has put together, let not man put asunder. And again, how do we know, or how can we know, or do we know that God has put them together? That's coming up, mother. Trust okay. me, how do you know? All right. That's coming up. Well, actually, you know, we're, we're discussing it uh, kind of now, but no, it's coming up, it's coming up. Sister Mel? So my question still remains. Uh, um, let's say, Kristen, your sweetheart, your princess, you took her to the altar, gave her away. A couple months after, she called, Daddy, he's beating me. I'm locked in my bathroom. I can't get out because he's threatening to kill me. What would your response be to your sweet little daughter, Want your one daughter? Same thing. Same thing I put on the screen. No, yes, depends. Mm -hmm. um, if the spirit, listen, yo, listen, everybody listen to Pastor Paul. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the Holy Ghost trumps Pastor Paul and the Holy Ghost trumps any one of our opinions. Yes, sir. The Holy Ghost can tell you stay in the marriage. Now, the Holy Ghost tell you stay in the marriage. I can't, I can't tell you to divorce. That's why the no says if you're led by the spirit. If the spirit tells you no, I will not speak against it, right? Because the spirit trumps me. If now, Amen. if, um, now the answer is yes, if the model is broken. So if my daughter came and said, um, this guy's beating me or whatever, the first thing I would do is tell her, come home, don't, don't be with him. I wouldn't. My my default would not be to tell them to, to divorce. Listen to Pastor Paul. Because if I tell them to divorce, it doesn't fix the problem. Right? It just keeps them away from each other. What I would do is I would meet with that individual to investigate what the problem is. Okay. And sometimes what is revealed is one, either he is, um, he's deep <laughs> into the depravity of sin, right? And that's why he's practicing this vicious lifestyle. He could be a believer, but he's, that's a stronghold he has. Or this individual, is not a believer at all. This individual, this, please listen to me. This individual does not have the spirit of God. He, as last week, is a Christian in name only. And now we reveal, it is revealed, he is not a Christian at all. So now I'm seeing there, because if you had any ounce of Holy Ghost in you, how could you practice such a thing? How could you do that? With zero Amen. conviction Amen. by the spirit of the Lord? Amen. That's right. You're not saved. That's right. So that's where I need to investigate 
where he's at in Christ. Amen. Right? Not whether he's married or not. I need to investigate where he, if he's married in Christ, I mean, where he is in Christ, where's his marriage to Christ, right? And that is a different approach on how inevitably what happens to the two of them, right? Now, if he is not, if he has no relationship with God, if he's just a Christian in name only, Divorce is a possibility because they're unequally yoked. But it's not simply to tell her, okay, divorce him. No, there, there are other elements. And that's why I say that every situation is different and I would have to uh, uh, speak to the situation. But she's not going back with him. You can forget that. Not as long as he remains in that state, he's not going back with there. But again, I would inquire to the root of the problem. You're why are you doing this? And my first default is you're not a Christian. And if you're not a Christian and the other party's a Christian, that falls into another it's category. Yes. Um, yeah, but to answer your question again, Mel, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, my daughter. Um, does not have to go anywhere near him, come back home yeah. with dad immediately and have nothing to do with him um, until we address. And if we can't address it with him, then he got to hit bricks. <laughs> That's it. You see, there's a, a, whole, a, whole, there's a whole number of scriptures because... If he is a Christian, this is why, saints, and I'm glad my daughter is on, why you have to be in the church. You have to be in the church. I know we ain't going to get to this tonight because it's already 901. Um, you see, because there's another scripture that says, if there's a situation going on, you go to the brother and go to the brother alone, right? And I go to this person who's beating my daughter. My daughter's home with me, right? I go to him. And I said, listen, the ABC, yeah, no, uh, no, 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 uh, okay, no problem. Now I go and I bring somebody with me. That's what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. And we both speak to him. He that, denies that. that. He, doesn't, he doesn't want to hear that. Now I bring him before the church. Right? For his actions that he did with my daughter. Mm -hmm. I bring him before the church. I judge it. A small group judges it. Mm -hmm. Now the congregation judges it. Yes, sir. After the congregation has judged it, I want someone to look and find the scripture. What do we do with that brother? Pick him up. And how is he to be uh, categorized? What do we categorize him as? Somebody find a scripture. This thing will blow your mind. Yes, sir. Find that scripture and somebody tell me how we're supposed to look at that individual now. So that's why girls, Christian, whoever, it's one thing when you meet somebody outside, right? But there's no, there's no audience. There's no accountability that that individual has. You understand if he beats you or or something happens? No, he got to be. I I teach this right, and when when something happens in our congregation, we the men go and see that man. I tell the women in the church something happens to you, call me. So men, when I say okay, we got to go and meet with brother so and so. I know it's tough sometimes, but that's our job. When I say women, I need you to meet with sister so and so. That's our job. You understand? So we can correct behavior um, before it gets out of hand. And if it can't be corrected, then you have to deal with that individual in, a, in another way. Um, okay, should either party yeah. remarry? I'm going to go through these. Um, the answer is no and depends. Natural needs, you, you got to understand this, natural needs 
compel a person to seek relationship. You see, the way you were designed, I said this earlier, you were designed to seek relationships, yeah. right? Um, so the answer is no. If possible, if you if you divorce or separate, the answer is no. If possible, dedicate yourself to God. Um, all marriages have human sin and disappointment. So if you get married again, you just get you're just marrying another imperfect person that cannot keep God's uh marriage guidelines. And it depends, listen very closely, on if you are the innocent person, pardon me, if you're if you are innocent of the desecration or have corrected it with God. If you're innocent, if you weren't the one who committed adultery, if you weren't the one who is not the unbeliever, right? Then um, you can remarry. Uh, but the answer is, and again, to, to say to someone, to say to someone that, you must never remarry and be alone. Listen very closely to Pastor Paul. You must never remarry and be alone without actually getting into that person's life and knowing what's going on is kind of cruel because individuals will commit suicide out of loneliness because we put some law on them. And the reason we're putting some law on them is because we're trying to get people obedient to some law. You're seeing the law mm. and you're not seeing the person. And when I say that, I'm not talking about their emotional needs, right? That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, their DNA. You're designed to seek companionship. And if you're robbed with of companionship, you go into a depression. And if that goes unchecked, it can have life-threatening, life-taking consequences, even when it comes to sex. And that's why Paul said um, it's better to marry, marry than, to, than, to, than burn. to burn, right? And um, um, the framework, I'm giving you the framework, and I see your hand, Sister Loretta, I'll let you go, is that here... Um, um, even when Jesus said that scripture that we said, when Jesus said that scripture about, um, um, unless you divorce, unless for, um, sexual immorality, you, uh, cause you, you commit adultery. When mm -hmm. he said that the disciple says, well, you shouldn't even get married then. Jesus said, my words are hard. But they're for those who can receive it. Do you understand? Not everybody can receive that. And that's the problem. We give this one blanket statement for everybody. You can't do that because everybody's at different um, levels. Even Jesus said that. And Paul said, Paul said, I wish you were all like me. But he says, I know you're not. And that's why Paul gave accommodations uh sister loretta yeah so um there was a whole lot that was said and i was trying to um keep up with keep up with it so i could you know have a comment um but there were a couple of things that i um respectfully disagree with um 
you know, according to scripture, not according to how I feel or what I think. Um, I do believe that um, you are correct, Pastor, in that, you know, every single day we commit um, divorce acts. However, um, again, I hold to, to my to my com my work, my uh, comment prior and say that there is no room for divorce. And, you know, I may be in the minority and it's OK. I'm fine with that. Um, I'm not speaking from a place of perfection because myself, my husband, we're both, you know, in a work in progress. You're speaking from you know? a place, you're speaking from a place of scripture. Right. I'm speaking well, from a place. Of, right. But just, so just hear me out, Pastor. Pastor, Pastor, can you just hear me out? Only reason I'm saying that is because a lot was said and I want to touch on some of the things that were said, because quite honestly, I think it's a little dangerous for people to have the idea of if this doesn't work for whatever reason that I have that option as a default. God said in his word that he oh, hates hold on. divorce. Now, hold on, hold on. Now, again, this is, this is something I tell everybody. People will say to me, pastor, I disagree with you. I don't mind you disagree with me. I, I welcome it. Just give me the scripture. So I'm still looking for the scripture. And then number two, something that happens is I hear people say, I disagree with you. And then they say something I didn't say. I did not say that um, that divorce is an option. Divorce is not an option. This is why, again, I said in a lesson, it's in steps. Is, does God approve of divorce? No. Look Look on the screen. It's on the screen. You want to know past this position? Look over, follow the red dot. Follow the red dot. This right here is past this position, not this. This is past this position. How long is marriage for? Forever. Um, should any party divorce for any reason? Never. Should either party remarry? No. Why, Pastor Paul? Because marriage represents God and Christ and Christ and the church. And God and Christ will never it will will be married for eternity, um, and uh, Christ will never leave the church, and because that will never happen, there's no need for remarrying. So that's my position. Here on the right side is the sinful nature of man. These are accommodations, not that I make. There are accommodations that we see Moses and Paul and Jesus made. Moses, Paul, and Jesus. Those are the only three people you look in the Bible and see talk about divorce other than God, other than God. And these are the allotments that they made for sinful men. Number one, um, Jesus said that. Um, um, unless if you divorce a, a woman or if you divorce other than, um, other than adultery. adultery, right? No, other than sexual immorality, you're committing adultery. Listen to that statement. And I need someone, Joshua, are you on? B Bernard, are you on? Yeah. Listen to the statement. Jesus says, if you divorce except for sexual immorality, you commit adultery. According to just that statement, is it allowed for sinful man to divorce? Yes or no? Hmm. Anybody, anybody are can you, ask. Are you asking them or yes. are you asking me? I'm asking anybody. I'm going to say it again. Oh, okay, says, so so it, the answer is no, because I, that, because okay. I, well, okay, so I didn't get a chance to actually make my point, but what I was going to do, what I would, would have liked to do was to just talk about the scriptures that were already brought up in, de, in defense of 
divorce. And that was one of them. And so when you are understanding that scripture, when we look at that scripture, specifically referring to that, you will never find another scripture out of all of the scriptures that talks about divorce that that would support that. And so the understanding, what? the under support Jesus saying it's okay to get a divorce. For se- Jesus is not saying it's okay to get a divorce. Jesus is saying in that scripture that under that this particular right that's what i'm referring to this particular action you are allowed to get a divorce it's not okay he's not saying that he would do it he is saying he will allow sinful man to divorce under that particular circumstance so my point is if jesus gives a circumstance in which divorce uh, is allowed by Mm -hmm. sinful man, we can't make the statement that divorce is not allowed. You just can't. Right. So what what I would like to say is the understanding of that scripture has become, and I'm not saying you in particular, I'm just saying Christianity in general not when it comes to Christianity in general, that particular scripture has been misunderstood. So to understand that scripture, you have to understand the culture of the people that he's referring to when they were, what is the, um, just just hear me out, pastor. Just hear, just hear me out, pastor, please. When they were, um, when they were, uh, engaged that's the word i'm looking for when they were engaged in that culture that was considered as a marriage which is exactly why in i can't remember some one of the um four gospels when joseph was going to privately put mary away they were not even officially married yet they were engaged and right. so the the the, the be understanding married. Because God is not, God is first of all, not going to contradict Christ. And Christ is not going to con- contradict his, his son. They're one in the same, just like Christ in the church and, 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 and so on and so forth. So the understanding of that is, is that before you tie the knot, this, we're talking about these, this culture because we're talking about the people, right? Before you tie the knot, if you are engaged and that, sinful a sinful or sexually immoral act happens that is the time when it is it is permitted for you to put them away that that was the first thing that i wanted to point out the other thing was someone before you move on loretta before you move on before you move on i'm gonna let you go now again this is bible study um that's wrong it's not accurate Okay. This is I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a treasure hunt. Here's remember a treasure hunt is something that Pastor Paul uh doesn't know specifically is in the Bible, but I doubt it's there. I just haven't found it. Somebody go into the Bible and find that custom that um Sister Loretta just said. That there, she is correct. There were two parts of the marriage engage. There was the engagement part, and then there was the marriage part. That is correct. What I'm saying is that is human practice. Show me in the scripture where God said, I want two parts to the marriage. And in the first part, the engagement, you're allowed to divorce. That's not in there. That's a human custom. Now, if you look at the text, the text is they're trying to catch Jesus. It has nothing to do with the customs of men, right? It says, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it. Where's the scripture? Do you know? I think it's in Matthew 1 or Luke 2. Yeah. Where is it? Somebody help me. Pastor, I'm in in 1 Corinthians. No, 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 no,
the commentator says exactly <laughs> what you said. I mean, I'm in I'm in First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and it's still verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Now the comments, the comments on that scripture says, the members of Christ, the apostle warns against moral laxity. The, oh, the apostle's warning against moral laxity Jesus. shows the terrible consequences of sexual immorality. Please, um, can you, can you, can you, please, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, mute yourself. Mute yourselves. I got it. I got it. Okay, let me say that again, because it Go goes with what you said, Pastor. The apostle's warning against moral laxity shows the terrible consequences of sexual immorality for the believer. Joining his body to an immoral woman Mm. causes him to become with her, to come under her condemnation. And he refers us back to Genesis 2 and 24, where you're joined together. It causes it to desecrate what the cross has made holy, which is in verse 15 in the text I'm reading, and to sever, to sever himself from the kingdom of God, verse 9. In sexual immorality, a person virtually removes himself from union with Christ by making his body a member of the immoral and ungodly person. Mother, what? Mother, you're 100% correct. Watch the screen, mother. Watch the screen. That's why I said it was the next thing that was going to come up. Why would God allow divorce because of sexual immorality? This is what Jesus says, Matthew 19, 8. Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to, Moses permitted you to divorce your um, wives because your hearts were hardened. But it was not this way from the beginning. We said what the beginning was, before the fall. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, anyone who divorces his wife, Except, this is what I'm saying, Sister Loretta, we got to read the, we can't tell the text what it says. We got to let the Bible tells us. Except, what does except means? This is an allotment. Except for sexual immorality and marries another woman, commits adultery. And this is what um, Mother was saying. You see, the marriage represents Christ and the, um, the Christ in the church. So what happens is, in order, here it says, number one, in order for you to commit sexual immorality, you must tear away divorce from your wife in order to sleep with a person that is not your spouse. So the fact that you go to do it or do it in your mind, you've already divorced. Then number two, you must marry, unite, as that scripture says, with another person in order to be intimate. And then number three, you defile what marriage represents and try to join. And now you join with false gods. And then now you try to bring that back. Home. Listen, Loretta, please listen. Everybody listen. This is why God, um, Jesus, pointed out sexual immorality. Look on the screen where it says very important. Who things that cannot unite? You see, we got to stop looking at the scripture as laws. They're not laws, not to us who have the spirit. We have to see the reality. The reason why is because God cannot be joined with Belial. He can't. That you, it is impossible to marry Christ and Belial. It's not that he doesn't, it's impossible. So this is why he hates uh, this 
this particular where why he allows this um for sexual immorality you're going to go and join yourself with belial you're going to join yourself with whoredom or whatever gods whatever idols whatever the and then you're going to bring that back to me it can't happen it they just it's oil and water they just can't unite they can't be married now i want to show you very quickly Sister Loretta, stay with me, sis. I want to show you this scripture because you brought up um, you brought up the custom. This is why I say you got to read the text. The text says, if you look at it here, it says in verse 19, this is where we all get this text from. And this is what it says. When Jesus, When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee, went into the region of Judea to the other side of Jordan. Large crowds followed him and he healed them. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. That's what I said. There were the context. Jesus just didn't bring this thing up. Individuals were trying to catch him on something. So they said to him, they asked him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Isn't that one of our questions? Yes. It's one of our questions. So here, the the question is not, the question is not um, at at the betrothal or the actual marriage. The question is, can you divorce for any reason? That's the question on the floor. Jesus says, haven't you read? He replied that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female. Didn't we just open with that? Didn't we go over that? Yes. And said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united. We did all of that. This is why I said I give you the backdrop so when you read the scriptures, you understand it. Um, Be united with his wife and the two will become one flesh. That's how it was in the beginning. So they are no longer two, but flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. The answer is there. No divorce, none, no divorce. Stay with me, Loretta, because you, you think I'm saying something against you. I'm, I'm just trying to bring you into the scripture. No divorce, no divorce. This is what Jesus is saying. But what Jesus is doing is he's speaking from the spiritual. But now he's going into the natural after they ask him the next question. Why then? Why then, they ask, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? If there's no divorce, this is what Jesus says. They say, well, if there's no divorce, they they think they got him now. Moses allowed them to have divorce, right? Now, watch this. This is revolutionary. This is what it may be revolutionary. Jesus replies, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hardened. But it was not that way in the beginning. Before I go any further, let me ask this question. Moses allowed them to write a certificate of divorce. Those individuals who wrote a certificate of divorce, were they under God's judgment? Joshua, anybody? Moses, huh? Yes. No, they were not. No, they were not. How could they be under? It doesn't say that. How can it say that they were under God's judgment? I thought you said we've been under judgment since the fall. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. 
Were they under God's judgment because they divorced? You're right. I apologize. Were they under God's judgment because they divorced, because they listened to Moses and divorced their, their wife? No. Huh? No. No. Moses is the prophet, right? Mm -hmm. He gives this law and they're following Moses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And here Jesus is saying, Moses allowed you to do it because of the hardening of your hearts. The reason Moses did it was not to break the commandments. Moses did it so that you guys could live in peace, right? Jesus now goes back into the spirit and he says, um, um, I tell you, that anyone who divorces his wife, except, except for sexual immorality and marries another woman, commits adultery. So here there is an exception. So for us to say that um, uh, Jesus or God gives no exception for natural men to divorce, it's not biblically accurate. You can hold to that position. But it's not biblically accurate because here he's not addressing uh, he's not addressing uh, the time of the divorce. This is divorce period under any circumstances. That's what uh, Moses is addressing here. Um, Dag, it's already nine thirty. I knew we I knew we wasn't going to get through uh, this particular lesson. Um, one second, let me just see. One sec. Jasmine, you had a hand? Yeah, I don't know if I should, you know, ask my question anymore. I sent you a direct message, but- Oh, you did? Uh, I was I just like, that. yeah, I don't, you know, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way, but I was, you, were, you made a comment saying that um, no, no woman on earth has ever been abused um as badly as God as Jesus was on the cross. Yes. So I sent you a message basically asking, you know, I I said that I've heard, you know, a lot of stories on the news where there was husbands or wives, um, mostly husbands that have abused their wives, ended up killing them, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's even crazy as chopping them into pieces, disposing of the body. So I was just trying to ask is that do you still feel that that's less than what jesus went through when you um, hear like you know things like that uh -huh. um the reason i said that i don't know i um to what degree jesus was bitten beaten i wasn't there i just you know you read it in scripture and then i see it on the um news i mean i see it in movies and then i don't know the worst woman who was ever beaten and abused, um, I don't know to what degree she was. But the reason I say that is because there's a scripture in the Bible that says he was, um, I'm paraphrasing it, I, I'll, I'll try and find it and send it to you or text it to you, that he was beaten worse than any man. Um, uh, or, and, or beaten beyond recognition. So that's the reason why um, I said that, but yeah, it's not to diminish. It's not to diminish um, the abuse that a woman may go through. Yeah, I had I had one more question. Um, uh -huh. I was also confused. Like I know you explained everything about um, divorce and what you know. You showed us the scriptures about what God feels and the different things that you know could possibly be done. And we were talking about how you know, abuse can be one thing. I just felt like I didn't really understand um, God allowing or like, because you were speaking about divorce acts. So if somebody's being abused in their marriage, I feel that the effects, especially if you have children, is not, I don't, I can't see that being something that God would just say, stay in the marriage. 
if this person is being beat or let's say now if it's even worse to the point where the kids are seeing this and let's say they carried on in their life and they end up beating their spouse. So I was kind of like confused as to why. I know Loretta was talking about how she feels that, you know, you should still stay. And I, I just didn't really understand because the severity mm -hmm. of that to me, I don't think that God would want that. Right. And again, um, and I pray sis Loretta stay on, um, follow pastor Paul. Cause again, every point now I'm skipping around now, but every point I make is based on the previous, right? Um, um, in a relationship, if one spouse is beating the other spouse, the problem to God, to, the problem to man is abuse. The problem to God is your relation, that person's relationship with him. The problem is not abuse to God. Problem is your relationship with him. Because if you had a relationship with him, you would not beat your spouse. So God can hypothetically work a miracle and stop the husband from beating the wife or vice versa, but that doesn't solve your ultimate problem of that person having a relationship with him, right? If that person has a relationship with him and has the spirit of God living in him, that person has a self-regulating uh, mechanism, the Holy Ghost. So he would not beat his spouse. So what I was saying, and... um. I'm assuming Loretta is saying, is divorce doesn't solve that problem. I'm not telling uh, a woman that they can't get a divorce. Remember, when it comes to sinful man, or when, pardon me, when it comes to natural man or sinful man, the answer is, can you, should you get a divorce? No, yes, and depends. <laughs> it's, I got to see where it is. Every situation is different. You can fall into the no situation where the spirit tells you stay with the person. If the spirit tells you to stay with the person, I can't tell you to leave them. The yes is if they fall into the criteria that I've explained, then yes, you're allowed to divorce them. If um, depends is if it can be worked out, right? If it can, and I've, counseled couples with all three. I've counseled couples where there was abuse, but they worked it out. The individual gave their life to Christ. The abusing party gave their life to Christ. They, they ended up being more of a practicing Christian than the person who they abused. And now the relationship is wonderful. So again, every situation is unique. Now, I know we're running out of time, um, but by no means, like I said, would I tell you or any woman to stay in that relationship. Ms. Sister Mel gave the perfect example. My daughter calls, what do I do? I'm being beaten. Kristen, come home now. Matter of fact, don't even come home. J you just leave the house. I we're going to meet each other halfway. I come, I bring her home, I make sure she's okay. The next thing is I'm calling him. Now, here's the problem. I explained this. There's always a bigger problem. The, if you marry someone who's not in the church, who's not in the church community, you make it easier to be abused because that individual is not accountable, right? So if they're in the church community, I call him. I address it with him. If I he and I can't address it, I bring in another party. If the three of us can't address it, I bring that individual before the church. Pastor, 
Sorry. Hold, hold, let, me, let me finish. Now, remember, I asked someone, what is the next step? Someone, please, past is asking, please Here find is, Matthew 18, 15 through 20. What does it say? What is the last if part? A fellow, say? If a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. No, wait a minute. If if he ref wait a minute, wait, let me just put it all up and put it up. Give me a chance. Um, okay, Matthew 18, 17. Uh, uh, um, let me see, it's from 15. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. But okay. So, right so, there. Matthew 18, how, do, how do I treat, how, according to scripture, how do I treat that individual? As a tax collector or a pagan. As a non-believer. Mm -hmm. So now I deal with that individual and my daughter in a totally different way. Because I'm dealing with that individual as a non-believer. You see, here's the thing. Jasmine, Loretta, everybody listen. In the natural, forget God for a moment. In the natural, if that happened and, and one spouse abused another, you can't simply just divorce him. The police will tell you, leave the house. They'll arrest him, whatever happens. You have to go through a process, a natural legal process, in order to prove grounds for divorce. That's all this scripture is doing, but it's giving it on a spiritual level, right? Now, if that individual at the end will not adhere to the Christian values, he's not a Christian. He is not saved. This is what the scripture says, treat him, treat that boy is not saved. Now you fall into the category of unequally yoked. If you were equally yoked, he wouldn't have done that. You're unequally yoked. And now that opens up a different way of handling the situation. But also, this is why I say, I'm glad my daughter is on. Women and men, you have to be careful when you choose to get married because to God, right? It represents him and his son and that's for eternity. It represents Christ in the church and Christ would never leave you. So we have to make careful decisions to not put ourselves in those situations. Oh, okay. Mother Oliver, Sister Jackie, Loretta and Mel. Oh no, Mel and Loretta. Okay. And I apologize, Loretta. I just had to clarify something that you were saying. Yeah. Pastor, I just wanted to read the commentary um, in this Bible on Matthew 19 that you just shared. And it's Matthew, it, it references Matthew 19 and nine, the phrase, except it be for fornication. God's will for marriage is one mate, one marriage for life. And it says, see verses five, uh, see chapter five, verse five to six, Genesis 2, 224, and the note on Solomon, Songs of Solomon 2 and 7 note, and the note on Malachi, I'm not reading those notes. But to this, Jesus gives an exception. God's will for marriage is one mate, one marriage for life. And he gives several scriptures, including Solomon, the, the uh, Songs of Solomon. To this, Jesus gives an exception, namely fornication. Fornication is marital unfaithfulness and includes adultery or any kind of sexual immorality. And he refers us back to chapter five, Matthews verse 32 in chapter 19 and nine. Hence, divorce is to be permitted when sexual immorality is involved. The following are important biblical facts concerning divorce. Number one, when Jesus criticizes divorces, divorce in chapter 19, verses 7 to 8, 
he is not criticizing a separation because of adultery, but a divorce permitted in the Old Testament. In those cases where a husband discovered premarital unchastity after the marriage ceremony had taken place, Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 to 4, God's desire in such cases was that the two remain together. However, he permitted divorce due to premarital unchastity because of the hardness of the people's heart, verses 7 to 8. Number two, in the case of immorality after marriage, the Old Testament law prescribed the dissolving of the marriage by executing both the offending parties, Leviticus chapter 20 and 10, Deuteronomy 22 and 22. This, of course, would leave the innocent person free to marry, remarry, Romans 7 and 2, 1 Corinthians 7, 39. Number three, under the new covenant, the privilege, privileges of the believer are no less. Although divorce is a tragic tragedy, although divorce is a tragedy, marital unfaithfulness is such a cruel sin against one's mate that Christ states that the innocent party has a proper right to end the marriage by a divorce based on adultery. He or she is free to remarry another believer. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 27 to 28. And four, Paul's treatment of marriage and desertion in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 to 16, indicates that a marriage also may be dissolved by the desertion of an unbelieving, unbelieving spouse. He further indicates that remarriage by the believer in such cases is not a sin. And again, he refers us to 1 Corinthians 7 and 15 and 1 Corinthians 7, 27 to 28. Correct, Mother. Let me just address um, what you said real quick, like, and then I'm, I'm going to do this quick and then let somebody else um, uh, talk. This was another slide I was going to show you. Please listen to this. We make a mistake that when we get saved, right, we hold uh, each other to Sinai covenant marital laws. You can't. Those things that we read in Deuteronomy and all of those things, they don't apply to us. We, the world was ignorant of all of those things that happened in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, all those rules and regulations and all of that. The world was ignorant of it because it was given by God to Moses to a very specific group of people. Everybody else was functioning from uh, by different codes and different laws. Now, when this goes to Mother's point that she brought up, when Jesus came, that law was done away with. It was done, it's done. All those laws and the codes that we're following, is, it's void. It's fulfilled in Christ. What happened now is individuals, when the, when the gospel came to individuals who were not Jews, the gospel is now coming to individuals who are ignorant of that law. They get married. Uh, pardon me. They're married. And the individual who gets married understands the truth of marriage. But they're already married to an unbeliever. What do they do? Now, again, that stipulation on how to deal with that is not in the Sinai Code. This is why you will read Paul comes up with new allotments and guidelines for marriage, single life, and divorce that Jesus didn't say and that Moses didn't say because 
These individuals who are, he's speaking to, they don't know anything about that. So that's the thing we have to understand. Now, when what we do is we mistakenly force <laughs> the Mosaic covenant laws on believers. You can't do this. You have to do this. You can't do that. That law is void. What we must show individuals is the reality. The Mosaic law was a shadow. We have the reality. That's why if anyone wants to get married by me, I make it very hard for them, right? I present to them the model. I don't, I don't, I don't wanna know why the two of you wanna get married. That's irrelevant to me. I present to you the model, right? Because if you mess up, I'm holding you accountable to the model. I'm not holding you accountable to the Mosaic law. What, why you can divorce and you can't divorce. And no, you can ask Chandler and, and Loretta and Chandler and, and Carleen. When I have conversations with them, my conversation is not, well, in Deuteronomy, the second chapter, it says, no, I tell them, listen, you represent Christ. Go back in there and do what you got to do. What will Christ do? That's my conversations with them. I don't tell them about the Mosaic law, right? It, 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 flesh cannot obey laws, but the spirit, and the spirit is not going to, and the spirit was not designed to obey laws. The spirit was designed to live out the reality. So you have, when you're saved, the ability to live out the reality of, mess of marriage. So I don't point, in, point save people, try to make save people obey laws. I know that was a little, uh, might be a little difficult. You can comment on that, but let me go through the rounds. Sister Jackie, Sister Mel, Sister Loretta, and we're going to close. We'll pick it up next week. We're gonna try to close. It's it's been a a lot said. Um, I think a little bit to um Jasmine's question. I believe that's where I'm going somewhere. Um Pastor Paul began the Bible study with the spiritual aspect of marriage and our ultimate vow is to Christ. Correct. Now, in the case of um, an abusive relationship, pastor is not saying for anyone to stay in such a situation. However, the, the go-to is not divorce. The first thing to do is to remove oneself from the situation so that the underlying issue, which is the relationship with Christ, can be addressed how, for how long that separation will have to take. If it's a week, a day, a year, six years. But divorce is not the go-to, the automatic go-to. In the case of abuse, the divorce is not the automatic go-to. Separation to save your life is the go-to. And with our relationship with Christ, um, and all the, uh, but like I always say, too much, to whom much is given, much is required. To whom much forgiveness Correct. is given, much forgiveness is required. To whom much grace is given, much grace is required. To whom much mercy is given, much mercy is required. So the same observations of abuse that we witness in the world, if we look at it from a Christ vantage point, it's the same thing we do to him. So what we are watching in the earth and observation is what we do to him. And if he divorced us every time we made the same exact mistake that we're witnessing, what will we be? Dead. Correct. <laughs> so he's asking us in our relationship to him to extend grace, mercy, and forgiveness while he operates on the individual who is out of his will or 
or whatever the case may be. And then ultimately, when you when we bring these people back to our dads, our pastor, to the church, the ultimate decision will be made over time, just as it is with us. Um, grace is happening and judgment will ultimately happen and, and Christ will rule out in the end. But pastor is in no wise telling any of us to stay in an abusive relationship. We just have to see all things from a spiritual uh, Christ-like vantage point, not the fight and flight response that we've learned out here in society. I think that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, it, the, um, excellently, um, excellently pushed. And again, if you follow, that's why I said, listen to Pastor Paul. The first thing is to get my daughter safe. The second thing is I address that man. So if you'll find something wrong, find, find something wrong with that. He has to be addressed. Divorce doesn't address. That's like Sister Jax. It's not the default. That doesn't fix anything, right? He's just going to beat on the next woman. <laughs> Right, um, um, Sister Rock, and yes, Sister yes Ray. sir. So, Pastor, so my only comment today is prevention is better than cure. So, yes. so, Christ. um, I my Christ. advice to all the young ladies who are looking for suitors for marriage before they even um settle, bring them to the church. <laughs> let, That's what I said. Let the saints. Read them because you know that's where discernment come in. Um, right. I, I, baby Christine, I love all the young ladies, Sharon's, all the young ladies who are in the church right now who will, who will have future husbands. Bring them in. Don't secretly date them and then bring them after you've been with them for 10 years. Bring them in. Let's we search them before you make any decisions. Uh, all right. Wonderful, Sister Mel. That's what I said. And the thing is, we have been trained to not operate like that. We've been trained to go and find a spouse on the outside. And then when it goes wrong, to, <laughs> to do what? To, well, you, you should have brought that individual in, made the individual accountable. That's how it operates um, in the Bible, right? Um, and Sis Loretta um, has a comment. Um uh, uh I want to ask a quick question before we close. Pastor, um, are you gonna deal with my question next week? Yeah, I'm yeah, still waiting yeah, for that mother. answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mother. Yeah, mother. All right. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. Um let me ask you this quick question before Loretta goes, because Loretta they have the last word. Let me ask you this quick question: Did did um did Abraham commit adultery? Yeah, he yes, did? he did. Why? How? How so? Because he went with he was married to Sarah. And Sarah asked him to sleep with his with her maiden to have a child. And he should have known better. He, you know, <laughs> I tell you what, Abraham to me was just like Jacob. You know. Uh, well, the Jacob truth is, Abraham did not commit adultery. Ab Abraham did what was the custom of his time. You follow? That was the custom of his time. Yeah, I was, I was coming to that. I was coming oh, to sorry. that. Oh, sorry. Sorry. And this is yeah. what I want everybody to understand. Everyone. Yeah, that's, now, that's, that, that was is, a custom. Yeah, but, um, that's not God's will. That wasn't God's will. That's right. That's not God's will. That's why but I said God it's, it's, allowed. It's this is God allowed, but God never called to adultery. No, no, he allowed. God it. never, God yeah. never approached him as an adulteress. No. In fact, God blessed the woman and the child. Yes, because yes. God understands. 
that these are cursed Pardon me, these are judged sinful people living in a cursed world. And That's they're right. doing what seems right to them. Mm. So there are practices that God allows. There's practices that God tolerates. Though it's not like that in heaven, nor is it his will, nor is it his way, but That's he right. will not judge you nor condemn you for practicing it. That was clearly, mm -hmm. if, Mo, if that was under the Mosaic law, Mo, Abraham couldn't have done that because, yeah, yeah. because um, Solomon did it and God tore the kingdom away from him. Yeah. Right? But that law wasn't in place then. You follow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's the same thing with divorce. These things don't exist in heaven. They're not the way mm -hmm. God moves, but he understands in the earth, these are the practice, these things are allowed, they're tolerated because man is sinful. Yeah. And yeah, if I don't have... allow, if I don't allow them to practice this, or to separate, or to divorce, they'll kill each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And men could have close. more than one, more than one yeah. wives too at the time. Yes, that's yeah. what I was and saying. And that's what Paul Jacob. said. Paul said that if the unbeliever leaves, let him leave. You're not bound because God has called you. God has called you. God has called you to live in peace mm. sister loretta i apologize i had to squeeze that one in there sis loretta if no, you're still I'm, on I, i'm i'm on but i'm good we could we i'm good uh-huh sister mel that's an old hand but oh, okay I'll, thank you for the teachings tonight um there's mm. a, a nuggets that i could take away mm. from you. Amen, amen. Um, we went half hour over. <laughs> um, uh, and this, this marriage thing is is very um very delicate. Yeah, very well, again, sensitive. A well, again, sensitive. you again when you go with with the scripture as it actually you know as as what it says. Um, we just have to accept what the scripture says. Um, uh, as we close out in prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness, which is better than life. Father, we pray, Lord, as we close out, God, Lord, that you would make us to stop seeing simply agreements made between men and women that we would stop seeing simply rules and regulations. Now that we have the spirit, we have spiritual insight and we can see the reality of marriage and what it means and what it means to you. Father, help us to live up to that standard. Help us to transcend God above the natural desires, above the natural laws. And God dwell in that spiritual place. There we can get the true blessing of marriage. Father, we commit all of these relationships into your hands and future relationships into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen, amen. saints. Amen, amen, amen. Hi, Pastor. I'm going to go get something to eat. Pastor Paul. Tell your daughters.
Tell your daughters, go out and marry a Christ. And tell your sons, go out and marry a church. All right? Amen. 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 Don't have to worry about, worry about, worry about divorce. You won't have to worry about none of that. <laughs> Pastor Paul, God bless yes. everyone. And you can stay good night to Sister Lopez. She, she was trying to get on all night. <laughs> Sorry, Sister Lopez, God bless you, sis. We are so happy that you're with us. Amen. Okay, she's watching. Okay. Amen, amen. Okay, good night, Pastor. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Pastor Paul. Good night to you. God yes. Do, do we need to bring our scuba, our scuba outfits next week? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Tonight. I just want to know if I need to go out and buy my scuba diving suit and all of that. Yeah, I want to need extra, the next week. You might need an extra tank. Might need an extra tank. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to have it, have it prepared then. Okay. We all did right. see. Deep sea diving tonight. Tonight, I'm blessed. <laughs> it was wonderful. Amen. It was wonderful. Amen. 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 I learned so much. Yes, God bless you, mother. Amen. Love you.